Jim, what did you think of the original Mad Max? It's just such a cool movie. It's like as action packed as something like the Terminator because you just have these cars chasing each other down these like back roads for like three quarters of the movie. Getting into awesome crashes or running people off the road. The car stunts are amazing. They're the, they're the real highlight and it gets better in the series because Road Warrior is a huge improvement. Fury Road was like we hadn't seen anything like that in yeah. decades or maybe ever. So, but this movie it, it opens strong. It it sets a strong precedent for that kind of thing. Yeah, and I mean, the story's good. You know, as you as you pointed out, it's a, it's kind of like a straightforward revenge. There's not much to it, and there's not much really to many of the characters that appear on screen. But- no, there's there's one scene, which I, I didn't overlook the scene, but I overlooked, I guess, kind of a key moment of dialogue when he's, when Max is resigning with Fifi, and Fifi says something like, why are you doing this? And he's like, because I'm I'm worried that the more I'm out there, the more I'm out there tracking these guys down, I'll become one of them. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the only time it's mentioned. We can, you can argue that that's like what happens when he goes full anti-Semite psychopath killing people. And, <laughs> okay, yeah. But at the same time, <laughs> it's not really like, it's, it's more specific. It's not because he's just been out on the road. It's because his family was killed. It's a little different. Like, I, if that's like the theme of the movie, I don't think it really works that well. No, exactly. Like, really, I don't know if there really is like a solid theme that runs through this movie beginning to end. You know what I mean? There's something, but it's not, it's not the strength of the movie, certainly. No, and I think the thing that is running through this movie is George Miller's direction, his his vision for an Outback-based car chase movie. And I think if you're, like... It's that vision that brought Babe to the (laughs) big city. (laughs) Yeah. I don't don't know if you ever saw that movie. Babe, Pig in the City is actually great. Yeah, of course. Or at least I remember it being great as a kid. I mean, he also did the original Babe excellent film i remember babe picking the city i haven't seen it since i was a kid i remember that being pretty good it's no paddington too listen don't just bring up paddington too first babe is but great. if i'm not mistaken siskel and or ebert had babe pig in the city in their top 10 of the year they did every year it came out they like, did that's amazing yeah so it's probably a pretty good movie but again no paddington too okay. had ebert lived to see paddington too he would have said it's the best film ever made. <laughs> okay but uh, no, uh, Mad Max. It's just a, it's just a fun movie, and I I can't really describe it any other way. It's just a fun movie. It's not necessarily interesting. There are aspects of it that are interesting, but it's just a fun watch. There's really no slow points, and and the things that are slow, kind of like with Terminator, everything that's slow in this movie is building up to something else. But yeah, I like this movie. What about you, Patrick? What are your thoughts? I like it. Don't love it. For me, it's, you know me, I like the weird, ultra gritty, like, 70s era stuff. Like, I I know you weren't on the episode where we did Death Wish, but I I know I talked about that a lot. Like, the Death Wish, Dirty Harry, Shaft era of action movies. And this is, you know, this is well later, but it's kind of in that vein. You know, it's a little bit of a different genre because it's this dystopian thing. And I love the grittiness of Max and of the police force. I don't love the bikers. No, they're all terrible. It's just... It's a style of villain I just don't like. I think Toe Cutter is pretty cool. Like I, I like him as a as a villain because he is actually able to communicate without making weird faces and hooting and hollering and, and you know he's fine. He's intimidating. I think that scene where he gets Johnny the boy to light goose on fire i think that's probably his best scene but he has the great scene with that guy working at the rail- railroad station when he's yeah, that's like great trying too. to get him to take off his cap to honor the fallen night rider and stuff like that like he's just really intimidating i don't love the movie and there's a lot of reasons i don't love the movie i think the the characters could have been stronger i think we could have done a little bit more to us to a, i mean we do a it, the relationship's pretty well established in the beginning when we first see jesse because when he when max is going off to work she does that sign language thing she says like it's it means i'm, I'm, I'm crazy, crazy about, about you. you or something and that kind of comes back later but she's basically that's like her only scene in the first half of the movie and then like suddenly in the second half they're on their road trip buying dogs and stuff and i think they could have done a little bit more in between that mm-hmm. made her a bigger part of the movie they also could have done I mean, Goose gets him to quit the police force, but then he kind of just goes on vacation and it's almost like the Goose thing never happened. And, and the real snapping moment is when his wife died, which is fine. It, it the, the one plot point doesn't lead to the other, I guess, in the most satisfying way. I kind of took that whole scene and aftermath a little differently. When he told 
Fifi, he's like, I'm, you know, I'm resigning, I'm quitting. And Fifi's like, ah, oh, just take a couple of weeks. Max says something on his way out, like, yeah, sure, or something like that. Like, as in, I'm not coming back. I'm fucking done. My well, sure. Good, my, my good friend dying has, you know, caused me to leave the forest and stuff. And then I took this whole thing with Jesse. I took all that to mean like he's trying to start a new life somewhere else. He's just trying to get away. And it's these fucking hooligans, these bike hooligans, drag him back in. No, I, I get that. I, yeah, I get the just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in. Yeah, there's that. But But what's kind of weird to me, I guess, is I never know how personal it is with Toe Cutter and the gang. Uh-huh. Because we know early on, Toe Cutter wants him dead because of what happened to Knight Rider. And then it's personal with Goose, because Goose was the one who was threatening Johnny the Boy and doing all this stuff. And then so they kill him. But then it's like, do, do they even at this point care about Max? Or do they even know who Max, like who he is or like what he looks yeah. like? Yeah. You know? and, and then later on, you know, towards the end of the movie, they stumble upon Jesse the first time they stumble upon her and she knees him in the balls. Then they follow her. It's not because of Max, I don't think. They're they're trying to just get her back. Yeah, I think they were talking about kind of tr- wanting to rape her when they first saw her, right? Probably. I mean, that's what weirdo post-apocalyptic gang members do, right? I mean, that's their <laughs> thing. And then it's obviously personal for Max after they kill her. And then there's like a moment towards the end of the movie where Toe Cutter is like getting aboard his motorcycle and he just sees a photograph on the ground of jesse and sprague and it's like okay what was that though like i I don't yeah i guess as kind of neat as toe cutter is as a villain i wanted there to be like something more personal with him and max like i would love if toe cutter is as motivated to kill max as max is to kill him and he really isn't and i mean that's fine there's nothing wrong with it i just think i would have enjoyed the movie better if it was different i get that but at the end of the day the car stunts really deliver uh, it's difficult to overstate how freaking cool Max is. And I'm not one of those guys who's like, you know, I don't go into a movie like hoping it's cool. That's not like my number one yeah. requirement, even for an action movie. But when Max looks as cool as he does, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. And you know, with the black, the black car, the black leather. Oh yeah. that black The, leather. the hating black people. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's 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 low hanging fruit, but it's Mel Gibson. That's what it is. And oh, then no. um, that's just really cool because Max isn't that interesting of a character. He could be more interesting. I think there if there was more in the movie about you know that that concern he raises about like I'm going to become like them. I'm going to go crazy the more I'm out there. Yeah, I think if they if they had developed that a bit more, he could be a genuinely interesting character. He's really not that interesting. It's kind of just basic revenge man. But it pulls it off well because he looks cool, and he and Mel Gibson. Say what you will about him as a, as a human, he's a charismatic actor. He's he's good. Yeah, I agree. And I think for somebody like me, I really dig this movie just because of all the 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 action stuff, yeah, specifically car stuff, crash stuff. And I think somebody like George Miller, who I think that also gets him revving when you create a second movie called The Road Warrior. And that gets a whole generation of action movie lovers into your main character and story. You know, there's something to be said for... It's also worth noting in, in regards to the series, Max isn't really... You know, I'm kind of complaining there could have been more to his character in this movie. There's less to his character in all of the sequels. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's kind of just there. And it's it's interesting to to make a series revolving around a main character and then really not be that all that interested in exploring him and it's amazing the series has worked as well as it it has because the movies are basically and again it's been a while since i've seen any of them from what i understand there's a few consistencies with max there aren't many consistencies with the world like like we said this one's not really post-apocalyptic i think the other ones kind of are yes at least some of them there's always the crazy gang guys that that's a thing and I think I read somewhere that, you know, Max gets his knee blown out with a shotgun in this movie. And I think in the next two or three movies, he does walk with a limp like that. Like that's a consistent thing. And I think maybe they even include something with his injured arm in some of the movies. I think they even up to Fury Road, I think he even limps. And it's like, OK, that's oh, yeah. neat. And I think there's they do something with him like loving animals in some of the other movies because he does buy the dog here. But, I mean, who doesn't love dogs, though? Like, just weird. No, so, <laughs> yeah. I want to say a dog features heavily in The Road Warrior. 
Because I seem to recall an emotional scene in the Mad Max movies where the dog dies. And like I said, in this movie, the dog dying is like a blink and you'll miss it moment. So it's not from this movie. (laughs) Well, I know there's a dog kid in the series. (laughs) Is that what he is? (laughs) No. Yeah, do you remember the feral kid? That's 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 in the Road Warrior, I believe. But yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So good movie, not the best in the series, not the worst in the series. It's definitely better than Thunderdome. Sorry, Tina Turner, 